That took us two seconds, but it's coming. Speaking of feels of grace. Some out today, there someplace. Well, we're glad you're here. Oh, okay, great. Glad to have you guys. Yes. Aaliyah, Chris. Appreciate you guys being here. Yes. Thank you. Got the ladies to give them to give the good stuff out now. The ladies are doing it. What would we do without the ladies? Not very well. I can't do without, I guess. I have some church that I pastored in the Korean section. Uh, at the Korean church, there were some very strong, strong women. That those servicemen that had come to know Christ and these Korean women, wives, they there's going to be a lot of soldiers in heaven all because they had a Korean wife. I mean, they're, they're going to make sure their husband go to heaven. They ain't going to get question about it. They're going to, that's going to happen. One way or another, whether they have to pull the shotgun out or whatever, they're going to get them saved. And that's the way it was. But that's no joke at all, for sure. We'll talk about grace. I, I've, I've done a number of messages since I've been here on grace. But every Monday morning, I start reading scripture. And sometimes I may read 50 verses, sometimes I read several hundred verses. And when I was doing that Monday morning, I, I really felt drawn to do another message, something a little different, framing a little different perspective on grace. And I want to give that to you today. Grace is a wonderful, wonderful word. Mercy. It's kind of a companion word to grace. In the Old Testament, sometimes the equivalent of grace is referred to God's kindness, loving kindness. How many of you are glad for God's loving kindness? It's not in your notes, but Titus 2.11 says the, it's, that salvation has appeared unto all men Salvation is available unto all men and has appeared to all. And the scripture that we'll read this morning is James 4, verse 6 as a springboard for where we're going. I'm giving some different renditions of the different translations of it. As we do a slash there, I'm going to give several thoughts. But God gives even more grace, continues to give, gives greater grace. That is why the scripture says, God is against the proud, or God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Wow. Father in heaven, I thank you for this group that has come out today to sing praises to our God, to give a message that will encourage for the next week, that will give us strength to do our jobs and take care of our families. We need that strength and we need that grace every day, every hour, every week. Speak to us today through your word, which is alive, and make, make it alive to us. In Christ's name, amen. God gives even more grace. How many want to just say to God, I got some more, more favor, grace. Some of the things that people have gone through sitting here today had to have a lot of grace. A lot of more grace. When Pastor David and Becky lost their child, their son, 
in that bus accident or related to it. It was, it was the grace of God that carried you all through. And you needed a lot of it, didn't you? A lot of it. And there's things that people go through in life. Difficult places. The losses of great losses or great difficulties. They are candidates. They are people who need as much of the grace of God as you can give. And I like this, this passage of all the scriptures on grace. And I use a translation that I like. I gave several there. God even gives more grace. He didn't just give grace, but he gives even more grace, more favor. He continues to give. Or he gives greater grace. And then look at the contrast, the unbelievable contrast in this one little verse, six. He gives even more grace, but God is against the proud. He opposes the proud. Man, that's enough right there. It's time to get rid of any pride or anything close to pride in our life that would be a, an opposition, that would be a barrier to the favor of God. Father in heaven, help us to get rid of anything that would hinder, that you that would oppose your wonderful gift of even more grace. We need His grace. We need His favor. We need His loving kindness. We need His mercy. That, that brings salvation. The grace of God hath appeared unto all men. It's available. It's available. God giving even more grace is a wonder. It's an awe and it's a wonder. And to the point, it's a promise. If we will get rid of our proud attitudes, if we'll open up our hearts, I put a picture on here of the nail-scarred hand. It's not the best because our copy wasn't copying it quite as good. But if you look at that hand coming down, it's got a hole in the hand, kind of symbolizing the cross. And then the hand reaching up, that's us who desperately needs the nail-scarred hand. Come on. I'm very glad that you grasped and you reached out and touched the nail-scarred hand of our Savior. God giving even more grace is a wonder and an awe and a to the point a promise. And I like this. God will never give us up. If I was God, I would have given me up a long time ago. I'm telling you people, if I was God, I would write Dave Hicks off and say, forget it. He's just too unstable. He's too crazy. He's just got a crazy streak in him. I'm going to get rid of him. But God will never give us up. Does that make you want to feel humble before him? Does it make you want to rejoice? Does it bring tears to your eyes that you realize that God is not looking to give you up? Some people have this concept of, of God as some big general up in heaven with a brass boot, and he's just waiting. He's just waiting for you to step out of line so he can kick you in the breast of the shirts and kick you right out. But God is not like that. He don't have that brass boot wanting to kick everybody out. He's got his arms open and saying, come on in. Come on in. That's, that's the God we're talking about this morning. He gives even more grace when it's needed. He will provide even more of the power of grace so that sin must and shall 
ultimately yield to his sanctifying dominion. How many knows God's grace and God's blood is greater than sin? And sin must yield to him, to the blood of Christ and to the sanctifying grace of God. You'll like this guy I'm going to tell you about. Found this quote. You got to do a lot of reading to find things. Found this quote. Samuel Rutherford said, this is this now. In my case, here are multitudes of multiplied redemptions. Just, 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 just grab that for a moment. He's talking about himself now. In my case, what I'm going to tell you, here are multitudes of multiplied redemptions, S, plural. I defy, but Christ washes. I fall, but grace raises me up. I said, grace raises me up when I fall. I come this day, this morning, under the rebuke of justice, but grace pardons me. And so it is all along till grace puts me into heaven. Come on. Come on. If you make it to heaven, it'll be by His grace, not by your works. Not by you trying to work harder. By your efforts, you can't do it. Man cannot get to heaven on his efforts. It's only because of the wonder of God's grace. He says in my case, it's multiplied redemptions. I lift the heart but Christ watches. I fall, but grace raises me up again. Justice condemns me, but God pardons me. Wow. My spiritual growth will be to his glory. For I only grow because he gives more grace. Oh, to grow. Oh, Lord, I desire to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many have that prayer? Lest you lose your footing. This is one of the contexts of what's being said. Lest you lose your footing and get swept off your feet by these lawless teachers, Paul says. Keep growing in grace, spiritual maturity, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's where it's at. Come on. We've got to keep growing. You've got to keep growing. And some of us are growing in different ways. But I'm not talking about that kind of growing. I'm talking about spiritual maturity. Wow. I mean, know we can lose our footing so easily. We can be swept off our feet. Who's influencing you the most? You've got to ask yourself that question on a regular basis. Who is what is influencing me? Who is influencing me the most? We hope it's the Word of God and God Himself. So many voices out there screaming, saying, look at me, read me, believe me, join me. So many things are screaming at us out there. Grow in grace. Grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because God gives even more. To obtain, we, we discover more of our weaknesses. When we discover more of our weaknesses, how many ever had that discovery on a daily basis? When we discover more of our weaknesses, God gives us even more grace according to what we see in Scripture. When we learn where to obtain the weapons of our warfare, we must look to Him in grace, who gives grace, because it encourages us to continue in the battle. As long as there's one passion
action in the believing soul that dares to rise up and battle, God will give grace in the struggle until the victory is won. How many need grace in the struggles of life? How many need grace in the battles of life? And that grace will give you the wherewithal to continue the battle, to continue the struggle, and come out good on the other side. How many would rather win than lose? How many would rather be a winner than a loser? Man, for me, I like being a winner. I'll tell you the truth, I played a lot of tennis in my day, and i tell you what, I would run, and I would run, chase a ball, I mean, I would chase it, and I, I thought there was a few times I was gonna die on the tennis court. Because I wanted to get that ball because I don't like losing. Now, I have the racket in one hand and my belly in the other trying to hit the ball. But that's life. It's, it's a picture. I don't make you all laugh. I, got, I can't make you laugh. He's got three broken ribs. That's why he don't need to laugh. Anyway, when we discover more of our weaknesses, God gives us more grace. As long as there's that one passion in believing in our believing souls that dares to rise in battle, God will give us grace to struggle until the victory is won. God is the ever-giving hand. I said, God is the ever-giving hand. The text we've talked about here, but God gives us even more. I looked at every translation that there is on that verse. I like that, but God gives even more or greater. It's the Lord's habit. It's the Lord's way of doing things. How I many knows that God will not only fill your cup, but he'll fill your saucer too? We sing, fill my cup, but he'll fill the saucer and the cup and let it run over. I mean, like the run over thing. Yeah. That's, that's the kind of God we have. That's his way. That's his habit. That's, way, that's who God is. He's the ever-giving hand. I mean, he's received from that ever-giving hand. He gives even more grace. And truth for daily use. Yeah, we need his grace for daily use. We need a promise of daily pleading for others that we care about. What about the assurance when, uh, when testing comes, so sometimes severe testing? We need that assurance of his grace. Now this is, this is important. My spiritual poverty, hello, my spiritual, if there's any spiritual poverty I have, it's my own fault. I say God is the ever-giving hand. God stands there ready to give, to bless. My spiritual poverty is my own fault, for the Lord gives more grace to all who believe for it. Every virtue can be traced to grace, the root from which they spring. Listen, God is the ever-giving hand and grace is the means and the favor he gives us. Grace blooms. Grace is directed in the Bible to creation, to the needy, to the sinners, to all who believe. I like the church I read about years ago. They were struggling to get people to come. You know, the church's attendance is down across the nation. And this church... The pastor, he bought, he bought an ad in the newspaper and he gave the name of the church and he said, we need some sinners really bad. <laughs> and he just made a real plea for sinners to come to the church. He said, we really need you really bad. All sinners are welcome in this church. Yeah. I like that. Grace is directed in the Bible to creation. That's pretty pretty big deal, to the needy, to sinners, and to all who believe. I'm here glad that you're a sinner that's been saved by His grace. Amen. Grace blossoms, as it were, as people respond to God's word in faith. Grace guides one's entire life so that God is pleased and life is full by grace. God created. By grace, He redeemed. And by grace, He restores. Come on. 
How many times has God, in your journey of faith, in your journey of walking with Him, how many times has God come and restored you when you were deficient, when you were in need of strength, when you were in need of favor, God came and gave you more of His favor and grace and restoration, whatever you needed. Now, this is important to know. We don't want to make grace too greasy, do we? We just slide. Grace was never meant to be a free ride from trouble. I know, I wish we could tell people they can get on the magic carpet and they can just float all the way to heaven. Wouldn't that be a nice thing? But it doesn't work quite that way. Grace was never meant to be a free ride from trouble. Look at the Apostle Paul. An undefined ailment. It was called a thorn in the flesh, but nobody knows exactly what it was. An undefined ailment was Paul's constant reminder that the flesh is weak, but grace is strong. I said the flesh is weak, but grace is strong. Let's say that together. The flesh is weak, but grace is strong. And grows stronger in the face of human weakness. Man, I think all of us here today, I think I can safely say it according to God's Word. We're all in need of His grace. And more, if possible, it is. Here's what Paul says, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. But he said to me, now, now Paul is asking the Lord to remove this thorn in his flesh. And we don't know exactly what it was, but it was something. Could have been physical, could have been something else. But God said to him, he prayed three times, but God said to me, to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Underline that word or either remember the word sufficient. God's grace is going to be enough. God's favor is going to be enough to get you through anything. Come on. My grace is sufficient for you. Like this. For my strength, God's strength, is made perfect in weakness. Therefore will I boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, insults, hardship, persecution, difficulty. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Come on. Get your muscle up there. He makes us strong, doesn't he? Makes us strong. I want to tell you, I want to convince you this morning that God's grace and his even more grace will always be enough to get you through anything. Paul says, through weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecution, difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. Wow, I love that. Don't you? Back of your shoe. The most startling moment, <laughs> the most startling moment of grace is God taking human form in Jesus Christ. And it's startling, all right. The incarnation, it's hard to wrap your mind around the incarnation. But your soul can rejoice. As Faber, Frederick Faber said, to understand the love of God is darkness to my intellect, but sunshine to my soul. Hard to understand. The most startling moment of grace is God taking human form in Jesus Christ. Dying to save humanity from the consequences of sin and rising from the dead in demonstration of supreme goodness and power. Amen. Somebody say amen. That's a good thing to say amen. Yes. And then, okay, let me read this again. Dying to save humanity from the consequences of sin, rising from the dead, demonstration of his supreme goodness and power, all of that. And then, <laughs> I sit beside John and we do these little extra things together. 
I said, we've got to make emphasize this. And then, by grace, God invites all, everybody say all, all. to join his family. Come on. How many are glad to be a part of his family? He invited us to be a part of his family. Wow. Notice 2 Corinthians 4.15. For it is all, all, for your sake, for your benefit, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase, overflow, with thanksgiving to the glory of our God. Amen. <coughs> Grace turns every darkness and fear into power. I say grace turns every darkness and fear into power, love, and capability. 2 Timothy 1.7 God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind or one rendition, paraphrased, good mental health. How many are glad that God, through His grace, gives us good mental health? Isn't it nice to be around people that have good mental health? It makes a difference, doesn't it? Grace is transformative. Receiving grace changes a person's life and motivations forever. I said, grace is transformative. Receiving that grace changes a life forever. It changed the Apostle Paul. Look what he says in Romans 6, 1 and 2. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament. Grace is descriptive of both God's character and transformative power he provides to people who just simply ask for it. And James says, if you want wisdom, just ask. And what do you say him do? And I will give it to you, what's the word? Liberally. And then I like the last part of that. And make no, I won't make no big deal about it. I'm going to pour it on you. I'm not going to make a big deal about it. I'm just going to do it. That's amazing. Just simply those who ask for it. And not because you're worthy. You never will be worthy. But Christ makes us worthy. In Ephesians, we are, ex we are accepted in the beloved to the praise and the glory of Christ. To the praise and the glory of His grace, wherein we have been made accepted in the beloved in Christ. How many glad you've been accepted? Accepted. You're accepted. You're good enough to be a part. Yeah, man. I've told the story many times when I've played some sports. I wasn't as good as some of the others. And while they're choosing upside, oh, I'm going to take that guy. Because he's good. Yeah, I'm going to take that, that person. They, they know how to hit the ball. Good. Then they finally come to you. Well, we've got to make even size. Hey, come on, you get to play on this side. I mean, you know, some people are just better than other people's sports. But it's nice you got accepted even though you're the last one. We've been accepted to the praise of His glory. We've been forgiven according to the riches of His grace. How many are glad you've been forgiven? According to the riches of His grace. We are saved by grace. And that not of ourselves, which is a gift of God. We're saved by grace that is through His loving act, irrespective of what we are, of being, or what we have been. So we are accepted, we're forgiven, we're saved by grace. We're made trophies of His love through the exceeding riches of His grace, verse 7. We're privileged to be the witnesses of the Lord through grace given. We're witnesses this morning. I mean, we give testimony. You're a witness. You've experienced the grace of God in you, and you're a witness to that. Yes. And then we're exhorted to channel a blessing. We're exhorted to be a channel of blessing to others by our consistent life that we may minister grace to them. Pass it on to somebody else. And then the benediction of love is grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, chapter 6. 
In conclusion, my father, who was a great minister, he really was, Pastor David, he was saved. He lived his life up to 28 years old, gambling in the bars of St. Louis. His mother was a bar mom, if you know what that back way back then, what that was. She worked in the in the tavern, and he played blackjack, poker, and pool, and made a living part of the time playing pool and gambling. And he went to a revival and heard the gospel for the first time, 20, 28 years old. Heard the gospel for the first time and walked that aisle. Went home and told his mom, Mom, I got saved! She looked at him, grumbling, a little aggravated. Well, it won't last. Ten years later, He's already gone into the ministry. He comes back to Arkansas and does a revival a few miles down from her farm. And she walks down and says, well, it did last. And she got saved. But my father, I can hear him if he was here this morning and he was preaching on grace. He would finish with this because I remember as a young person hearing this many times from him. He would say, there is saving grace there is living grace that you need to live by. It's grace to be saved by. Grace to live by. And when it comes time to depart this world, there's dying grace. Saving grace. Living grace. And when it's time to go meet your maker, there's dying grace. And I had to put this on at the last minute. We had to add this and send Joe a, a copy that was corrected. D.L. Moody said, I'm glad that we're saved by grace and not by our works because I don't want to sit in heaven and listen to everybody brag in eternity for how they got there. Amen. That would be pretty pitiful. Amen. Pretty pitiful. Man. You were given a copy of a song we've sang before here, maybe. But I want to sing and get it. I want you to take this home with you so you look at the words at home. Put it on the refrigerator. I know you're going to look for food for sure. Let's stand together. These great, we're going to sing the verses and then we'll sing the last, the course to the last. And we'll keep singing the verses and then go to the course to the last. I want you to look at the words. Look at the words. Marvelous. Grace of our love, grace that exceeds our sin. Receive. 
to the middle and we'll have a closing prayer. Come to the middle. footsteps are leading a righteous path. Lord God, we give you praise. We thank you for your many, many blessings. We cannot count them. There are so many. Thank you, Lord, for every heart that is beating here, every lung that is breathing here. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory because you are the great God, King of kings and Lord of lords. And we love you. The reason we love you is because you first loved us. You gave yourself for us and we thank you. Words cannot express our gratitude, Lord. I pray a special blessing on everybody that is here today. Small in numbers. But the angels of heaven rejoice 
because we're rejoicing. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for your shed blood. Thank you for the grace that passes all understanding, but it's there. And we drink freely of it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dane. Thank you very much. Oh, boy. Joe, what, yeah, what Jesus is the sweetest name? What do y'all play that in? Jesus is the sweetest name.